Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So, some of you may have noticed in my previous videos that there is a turtle, uh, she's called Agatha, um, living in my arowana tank. Now, she's only been in here for a couple of weeks. She normally lives in the five foot sump below this tank. Um, but when my Oscar fell out with the giant garami in the pond, I moved her up in here temporarily and the Oscar has been living in the sump, but it's time now, he's all healed up, it's time to get him up the fish room. And basically, um, because he's an Oscar, he's basically wrecked the sump, and I feel really inspired today to do something really nice for Agatha, and really set her up, um, a really nice, you know, planted, sort of very natural aquascape for her. So Agatha's a musk turtle, um, she is about five years old now, um, so when you get them they're about the size of a 50 pence piece and Agatha now is about the size of a good sized jacket potato um, and she's probably actually one of the most dangerous animals that I have. Now Agatha's always been in a good sized tank um, and I have kept her with fish plenty of times, it normally ends up going badly so at the moment she's fine but she does like to nip on catfish whiskers, placo tails, um, other fish tails. And if there's a sick fish in the tank or if there's a fish that's getting a bit old and it's getting a bit tired, um, she will get hold of it very, very easily. So she's pretty ferocious and I don't really want her in here long term. Even though, you know, she's fine for now, I don't really want her uh, staying in the seven foot because it's not really the ideal environment for her. She normally stays in the sump because it's colder down there. The heat is up in this top tank. Um, because she's an adult, she needs it a little bit cooler. But anyway, first I need to catch my big Oscar um, Titan out of the sump. And then uh, we're gonna start thinking about building up the sides of the sump above the media with soil. Um, and popping some plants in there. So the sump is gonna be doing a little bit more for us and absorbing nitrates and things like that um, and providing that sort of natural filtration as well as providing Agatha with lots of places to burrow because she does lay eggs every year um, and it's quite stressful the, for them to lay eggs under the water. So yeah, we're gonna get you set up today, Agatha. Yeah, and uh, hopefully you're gonna enjoy your new setup. I know you like having lots of space in here um, but I can't have you taking chunks out of my arowana. So, let's start off by catching this Oscar out of the bottom here. And yeah, so this is Titan. Titan I've had for many years. Um, I got him off a friend of mine. Um, and he's, he's a pretty big Oscar as far as they go. Um, he's definitely well over a foot. And uh, yeah, he's got a big, thick old head. And he's got a bit of an attitude problem, but he's very sweet towards humans. Um, so yeah, he's a big fella, and he could probably do with a little bit more space. He did have lots of stuff in his tank, but I've been slowly taking it out, because all he's doing is like whacking it against the glass, which is disturbing us in the evenings. So he can go do that at the fish room with all the stuff, where he won't disturb anyone. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a big beautiful boy. I've had him for a long time, I'm very fond of him. So yeah, he does have a bit of an attitude problem. He does bite. So, it's, they've got really, really tiny teeth. They can draw blood, um, but yeah, they, excuse my nail polish, but they, um, they do have really, really tiny teeth way back there. Now the water looks yellow because we've got the turtle's uh, UV and heat lamp on this tank down here. Um, but I've, I've realized that I do not have the correct net here. Um, all of my big nets are at the fish room, but I'm going to try and corral him into this bucket anyway. Now, Oscars, when you get them out of the water, they fight. Um, they slap their tails. Um, so I'm going to move all these glass sliders and stuff out the way. Um, and yeah, just basically try and get him out and into the bucket without him jumping back out the bucket. Um, and it being really chaotic. And yeah, basically, he's going to fight me. Um, they always fight. So let's just move uh, this slide along a little bit. Um, yeah, he's very suspicious of me right now. Sorry about my slippers. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this, this is a 20 I'm going to be very lucky if I can get him in his net, uh, to be honest. There's the bite. You go back out again. Are you calm? Cool. So, 
well that's that. <laughs> So what I need to do in the pond here is basically uh, follow my own advice a little bit and uh, break up the lines of sight. So what I'm doing is going one diagonal uh, using these uh, just plastic flower pots that I've weighed down with uh, other little hides inside them. And then I'm just going in across the other diagonal with a branch of beech. And hopefully this is gonna provide enough territories for the two of them. And now that they're in, um, it seems that this has worked. Uh, so I've got Titan in here, and then I've just been uh, pooling around the fish room, getting on with some other bits and pieces. And um, yeah, so he's over in this corner right here. And then Jub Jub, the giant Garami, who um, is the reason why he was in the other tank in the first place, um, is over there. And so far Titan also seems to be ignoring uh, the little Oscars in here. Um, which is good. Um, he has been with the other Oscars before, so hopefully that'll be all right. Um, but there's lots of uh, little places in the middle um, where the little fish can go. So yeah, we'll see how this works out. But I need to get back and sort out the turtle tank. So what I'm doing here is basically each side where the sump is, I'm gonna pop in a tray and fill that in with um, sand and moss and plants and things like that so I can lift the tray up and still do my maintenance. So I created a sort of beach area on one side and I was just careful that she can't access the pump. And then basically the other side I had this sort of like slate piece here already with this um, pothos as they call it growing out. Um, so I just fleshed this side out with some moss and bits and pieces. And that created this lovely sort of like babbling brook type area. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, I like how that turned out. And then, yeah, on this side, uh, I keep calling it like Turtle Beach. Um, so that's an area where she can like dig and bask. So I have actually uh, popped Agatha in here for the meantime because I, uh, this is absolutely typical, I noticed. One of my clown loaches has got a big chunk missing out of his tail. This is absolutely typical. As soon as I say I'm gonna move her, she starts taking chunks out of my fish. Um, but yeah, this is why I don't generally recommend um, turtles with fish. You think the clowns are nice and fast, um, but no, um, that's definitely a turtle bite because uh, she's taking the chunk out of it like a sandwich, haven't you? Okay, so I've got my rocks from the garden centre. Um, I picked these up from the uh, aquatic shop, Word of Water, uh, in the pond section. So these worked out at uh, two for nine pounds. So I've got six of those here. Um, I've given them a quick rinse because they were a little bit grubby. Um, and these are what they're calling rustic slate. Um, so it's just slate with a couple of, you know, quartz occlusions and things like that in it. Um, and basically what I need to do is because these are very large and um, I'm not gonna have too much wiggle room once they're in, I'd like to work out where I would like them first before I put them in the tank. So I've got a bit of polystyrene down so I don't scratch the floor too much. Um, Agatha is going to sit in her log and watch us. Um, I'm just going to use my bag of sand as well. So basically something like that is what I am thinking. Um, so she's got a little cave underneath and then um, it's a nice ramp and a shallow sort of area for her to climb up. In fact, I could even take that in such a way that she's got some steps so she can go up. And in fact, I could probably spin that one round as well. Um, because it's a little bit sharp but yeah if I spun that one around as well then she'll sort of have steps going up um, and yeah that looks like obviously this is you know that that far off the bottom because um, the, the sump is raised but that looks like that's gonna pretty much line up um, and basically I don't really want to pop these directly on the bottom so I have some filter floss which um, this was six pounds. Um, so I'm gonna basically break it into um, little uh, flat pieces and then cover it up with sand so that it's sort of like braced against the bottom of the sump. Um, and then hopefully it's not going to um, cause any pressure points or anything having 
quite a lot of weight um, stacked in the sump like this. So yeah, hopefully that works out. So Agatha is a musk turtle or a stink pot turtle, uh, Sternothrus odoratus, um, which basically means that they can like skunk you. Um, so if they're frightened, um, they, they sort of like fart out this um, horrible smelling stuff. Um, it's quite earthy or like sort of smells like bodily fluids a little bit. Um, it's not a very nice smell. Um, they are a kind of like look don't touch animal. Um, they do bite, um, she's got a long old neck and she can turn around and bite um, and yeah, generally um, it kind of just stresses them out. Um, so they're, they're not really an animal that you want to handle too much. There's a couple of different types, so you've got like razorbacks and loggerheads, Agatha's just a normal type. Um, and in captivity they live maybe like 30 to 50 years, so they are a big responsibility. Now they can climb really really high in the wild, um, they found them like up in trees. Um, so I have been careful to make sure that this doesn't stack up too high because um, she can climb out and she has escaped once we found her under the sofa. She can also eat and dig up most plants. She eats things like um, duckweed and stuff like that. Um, all of the lovely floating plants that look great in here. She eats those um, and yeah, things like Elodia. Um, she, she generally just like digs and tears up a lot of plants, which doesn't work out great. So a lot of the plants need to be out of the water and she seems to sort of leave those alone. And just to um, blend in the two areas, I'm going to go in so with some of this uh, twisted wood out of my garden, uh, which I've used so many times before. I just really love the effect that this gives. Um, I'm aiming for a sort of like swamp effect because she's from like the swamps in like Florida. So now that we're done, this is uh, basically what I've come up with. So her basking area needs to be anywhere between like 32 and 38 degrees um, centigrade, so 90 to 100 Fahrenheit. Um, and they do need UVA and UVB. They don't really bask very much, but they do need the option to. Um, so she's got this like little patch of sunshine where she can come out of the water. And they also need quite low humidity as well. So it's important not to have a lid. It's also important not to have any stones or gravel with them because they're not very bright um, in the wild. They eat things like snails and crayfish, um, tadpoles, insects, worms that go into the water. Um, a lot of the commercial turtle foods are actually awful for them. Um, but yeah, they will eat a stone. Um, she quite enjoys shells and eggshells and things to crunch on as well for a little bit of calcium. Um, especially when she was younger, she used to really enjoy an eggshell. But I think now that she's like fully grown, she doesn't really um, need them as much, so I do offer them every now and again. So yeah, she will eat fish, they do bite, um, and yeah, their shell is actually their rib cage. Um, a lot of people think that there's just like a turtle inside a shell, um, but you must never like flip them over or anything like that, it can really be damaging. Um, and yeah, just um, bear in mind that they've actually got skin over their shells and they can feel it. So what I did here is I actually added a little fog machine. Um, now they do need low humidity, so I'm not gonna have this on all the time, but obviously she is from Florida, so she can deal with it every now and again, just for show, you know, um, just to make it look pretty. But I'm really pleased with how this has turned out for her. So this is a five foot sump, um, and then each side's probably taken off about a foot and a half. So she's got about three and a half foot of uh, swimming and basking space with this sort of like shallow area where the UV is going to hit her, but she can still stay in the water. And then these two areas either side. So as I mentioned, she does come out and lay eggs. The females will come out and lay infertile eggs. Um, and it's important for them to have an area where they can do that um, safely and peacefully. So she can go over and do that in her little beach area. Or I suppose she could dig in the moss on the other side if she wanted to.
so after all of that, I'll uh, offer her some food, which she will gladly take. And we're better off for up the uh, top bunks and food as well. So um, I feed these a, a mixture of things, but I've always got to make sure some bloodworm goes in here. And what tends to happen is the arowana just shakes the bloodworm around um, and swallows sort of like most of it. And then everybody else gets, gets a turn as well. So the eel does get enough to eat. So yeah, let me know what you think of the new setup and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.